There's many eras to Dylan. There's his early stuff, his protest stuff, his more surrealist stuff. He's got a Christian period. And this is one of the tracks that was written during that sort of Christian period. Or you can even say a slightly post-Christian period, period, which was the Infidels album, which was seen as a return to secular music. It was a outtake from that album, which was this track, which eventually led to a bootleg in 91 that was released so i've covered a couple of bootleg dylan stuff this is how good the man was his bootleg stuff is so highly revered so here we go another kind of outtake you will of dylan let's see what he can come up with and essentially doesn't think is that great which wasn't the truth the last bootleg track that i checked out was fantastic this one is requested by peter so let's check out the track this is blind willie mctell by bob dylan Pianos, guitars. Very haunting start. Seen the arrow on the dark post. Saying this land is condemned. All the way from New Orleans to Jerusalem. Wow, his voice sounds incredible. East Texas, where many martyrs fell, and I know. Is this the best vocals from Dylan? Well, I heard that I'll wow. As they were taking down the tent, the stars above the barren trees was his only audience. The melody he's choosing. Them charcoal gypsy maidens can strut their feathers well, but nobody can sing the blues like Blind Willie McTown. Okay. This might be the very best of vocals I've heard from Dylan so far. It's it's uh, the pairing of his voice, I think, maybe took him time to find where best to put his very unique style, his very unique timbre, I think it's called, to his voice. But this is it, man. And with time, I think he's really mastered the sound of it, how to get the best out of it, because this sounds so fantastic. How he's weaving through the instrumental with this melody it's uh it's very haunting even with the instrumentals seems like a tale that's being told with the repetition of this line every time at the end of each verse and then no one can sing the blues like blind willie mctell i'm trying to understand why he's ending it with that what is the kind of idea what was the concept what why is he trying to do that because the verses seem to be biblical in nature so then what's with the pairing why is he pairing that that's going to be an interesting thing see them big plantations burning hear the cracking of the wind smell that sweet magnolia blooming see the ghost of slavery I can hear them tribes moaning Hear that undertaker's bell Nobody can sing the blues hmm. Like blind Willie MacDill The mood that he set is so brilliant it reminds me of the track all along the watchtower not in its specific mood but just the fact that he's created this scene this picture like visions of of a time that's gone past is what i'm taking it as especially with the stories 
And maybe why he's ending it with nobody can sing the blues like Blind Willie McTell, who I found out uh, doing the research behind the song song is that he was a blues singer and a fantastic blues singer who wasn't very famous. So is that the point of him ending it with Blind Willie McTell? No one can sing the blues. Just like Blind Willie, Willie McTell, uh, not many people tell this story. Is that the point of what he's saying? That the start of each verse, no one really speaks about these things. For example, slavery. See them big plantians burning. Hear the cracking of the whips. Smell that sweet magnolia bloom. I just just make sure what magnolia was. It's a type of flower, right? That's in the South. So is he saying that just like Willie McTell, this story isn't told? That's that's my takeaway from it. There's a woman by the river With some fine young handsome man He's dressed up like a squire Definitely one of his very best tracks I've heard so far. Um, think of, I was saying, think of the width of the topics covered on this thing. Religion, the state of where he feels like people are today, slavery, and everything in between. I was trying to think of what was my favorite line from this whole thing. There was one that I thought topped it all. I think it came in the second verse. There it is, see the ghosts of slavery ships. I can hear them tribes moaning. Hear that undertaker's bell. What I took that as is, you know, they say the lost tribes of Africa who were taken from slavery. The idea of hear the tribes moaning, the idea of guilt, the guilt that can uh, play on a person's mind when they think about America and its history with slavery, you know, to hear the tribes moaning. Uh, you imagine the people lost at sea on the way to America. Fantastic line, which I think helps set the scene of what it was a quite a, a haunting track, especially with the music in the background too. This was the other one. Bootleg whiskey in his hand. There's a chain gang on the highway. I can hear them rebels yell. Isn't it interesting how he paired the two things together, right? I don't think it's a coincidence that verse three, 
he can see I can hear the tribes moaning hear the undertaker's bell he describes this situation and he compares it and contrasts it with this one here about this dude with his whiskey in his hand there's a chain gang on the highway i can hear them rebels yell like he heard the undertaker's bell again what what is the kind of main point of the track is really difficult to find out on the first listen of this type of dylan song what is he trying to say or the point he's trying to make or maybe there is no main point it's very difficult to grasp on the first time you hear one of these things especially a stream of consciousness type of track again you guys let me know what do you think of the repetition of no one can sing the blues like blind willie mctell why is he repeating that every time he has had other tracks like this where he ends it like this about um the it's uh mom only bleeding that track i think that's the name of the song where he had a similar situation every verse was en ended in a certain way glad i got to hear the song until next time catch you guys then peace <laughs>